uh, talking a lot about cancer, obviously, this weekend. Do we really fully understand the link between cancers and all the different toxins that we've been talking about uh, in our body? We can be exposed to things and not seemingly have a problem for decades and then something pops up. How, you know, how do we know? You talk about the people that, that smoke all their lives and don't, you know, and that doesn't do it. So how do we, do we really understand the link between the two these days? And the answer to do we really understand it, I think we understand it, but we cannot rate it and we cannot follow it in the way we would need to, and we're all different. So look at how many years it took to prove that smoking massively increases the risk of lung cancer. Look at how many years it took for us to prove that an exposure to asbestos, even though you worked with asbestos 25 years ago for six months and then stopped, you have a massive increase in the risk of asbestosis and mesothelioma. Long, long time, because it's not you cut your finger and it's bleeding. It's very, very slow. So do we understand? We understand some of it. The, the, the biggest issue is people that are skeptics. And I consider myself an extremely open-minded skeptic. Because if you're not skeptical, then somebody that says something that's horse crap and you like their credentials, you might believe it. Whereas I'm going to say, no, I need more proof. So I'm skeptical of everything, and that's what makes me good at what I do. But I'm open-minded enough to investigate and not believe anything until I'm satisfied. So we'll give you a good example to illustrate uh, an answer to your question. Somebody goes into the doctor, and they were just diagnosed with cancer. And I, I don't care what cancer, so I won't even mention one. And the person says, Doc, what caused, what caused my cancer? And the doctor says, we have no idea what causes cancer. That is a lie. Okay, that's not ignorance. That is a lie. If I'm this little bird on the patient's shoulder, the little bird would say, Doc, what does the word carcinogenic mean? What's the doctor going to say? Causes cancer. Causes cancer. So, I notice up in your bookcase, you have something that says PDR in it, and then underneath that it says physician's desk reference. What does that contain? The doctor's contain, oh, that contains every single currently legal prescription pharmaceutical drug. Correct, that's the proper answer. Do you have any idea how many of the thousands of drugs listed in that book in your library are listed by the manufacturer of that pharmaceutical drug that one of its side effects and conditions that's known is that it's carcinogenic? The doctor would say, no, I don't look for that part. Hundreds and hundreds. Do you have any idea how many pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides are listed by their manufacturer as required by law on the MSDS sheet, which is the material safety data sheet, as carcinogenic? Well, no, I don't, I don't follow that kind of stuff, the doctor says. Okay, do you have any idea how many types of solvents, toluene, benzene, all these different things, are listed by the manufacturers as carcinogenic? No. Well, doc, let me tell you. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of substances that the manufacturers that sell them to the distributors that sell them to the retailers that sell them to the public have to call them carcinogenic. So when you told that patient that's sitting under me, because I'm the bird sitting on their shoulder, when you told that patient that's sitting under me that we don't know what causes cancer, that's not true. We know thousands of things that cause cancer. They are carcinogenic, as you just told me. That means causes cancer. What we don't know is what combination of those caused his or her cancer. That I'll accept. Don't ever say we don't know what causes cancer. We have a great idea and we're not outlawing any of the stuff. So it's really, really hard unless you have someone, which sometimes we do, that has an occupation that gives them an exposure to something that we know. So for example, I've had patients that were painters and that's what they did for a living. They, they painted in oil paints and everything, and one got leukemia and one got lymphoma, and their doctors told them, because the doctor knew what they did, you know 
your hobby is what caused this, don't you? You know, it's all of the, 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 the nickel and cadmium and other toxic uh, uh, metals in the dyes in your paints and the fumes in the toluene and benzene. You realize those are the things we know that those cause leukemia and lymphoma. And sometimes the person knew it and sometimes they didn't. So sometimes we can say pretty likely we have a good idea what caused it. Other times there are so many different things together that we do have a very good idea. The doctor doesn't, they should, uh, but we just don't know for that individual person. And so the more we can reduce our exposure to the things that we know are bad for us, including some that they're not even admitting yet are bad for us, the better off we are.